Hello friends, welcome back. The next important tool as a part of data analysis in Excel that we are going to see today is the correlation analysis. This is one of those important tools that we are using on daily basis to understand whether the continuous variables are related or not. We are also going to understand this correlation analysis with the help of practical example and we are also going to learn what are the common mistakes that people are doing while conducting this correlation analysis. So let's begin. Let's start with the meaning of correlation. The term correlation is a combination of two words, co and relation. Co means together and relation means connection. This correlation is between two quantities or more than two quantities. Please note that we are going to conduct the correlation analysis only for the continuous data. Correlation can be positive or negative. To understand what is the meaning of positive correlation and negative correlation, please look at this diagram. In the first portion, we can see when we are going to increase the setting of one variable, there is a corresponding increase in setting of the other variable. So we can see both variables are increasing together. This is called as positive correlation. Reverse to that, if you are going to increase the setting of one variable and there is a corresponding decrease into the setting of other variable, then we can see there is a negative correlation. There can be the no correlation between the variables that is indicated by the third picture and the fourth picture indicated as a letter D indicates the curve correlation between the variables. The strength of correlation and whether it is a positive or negative correlation that is indicated by the correlation coefficient. The value of any correlation coefficient is between minus 1 and plus 1 inclusive of both minus 1 and plus 1. When this correlation coefficient is having the negative sign that is indicating that negative correlation. That means if you increase the one variable there is decrease into the setting of other variable. And when the sign of the correlation coefficient is positive, then it indicates that when we are going to increase the setting of one factor, there is corresponding increase into the setting of other variable. So the variables are having the positive correlation. Now let's talk about what is a common mistake that people are doing while conducting this correlation analysis. The correlation analysis should not be confused with causation. I am going to explain in detail with the help of practical example what is the difference between correlation and causation. Please make a note of it because it's very important and I had seen the people are doing this common mistake while conducting this correlation analysis. Correlation is when two or more things appear to be related, but it cannot be. How I can say that? Please look at this example. In summer, we can see there is increase in ice cream sale. But at the same time, we can also see there is increase in the sunburn rates. In this situation, if we conduct the correlation analysis between the ice cream sale and sunburn rate, what we can get? We can see that the ice cream sale and sunburn rates are correlated. By looking at this correlation, can we say that the ice cream sale increases your risk of sunburn? Of course not. Right? This ice cream sale and sunburn rates both are depending on the temperature of the day. Correlation doesn't always mean causation. This is a correlation. Now what is a causation? Causation is when one thing causes another thing to happen. There is a cause and effect relationship between two things. That means the one thing is the effect of another thing. Please look at this picture. Into the first part of this picture, we are giving heat to the pressure cooker and after a certain time we can see there is a steam which is generated. As we are giving heat to this pressure cooker, after a certain time, we can see there is a generation of the steam. So this is called as causation. Now there is a difference between correlation and causation that we have understand with the help of practical example. Now what is the important learning from these two examples? Whenever we are going to see that there is a correlation between the variables, we need to involve the subject matter expertise to understand whether it is a correlation or causation. After understanding these two important concepts, what is a correlation and causation, let's jump into the next part. How we are going to calculate this correlation coefficient? This correlation coefficient is also called as Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. The formula for the Pearson coefficient is given by R is equal to Sxy divided by square root of Sxx into Syy. Now how to calculate this Sxy? S, X, X and S, Y, Y. If you want to learn in detail how to calculate this Pearson correlation, you can check out my complete detailed course on correlation and regression analysis by clicking the link which is provided into the description. Now, 
how to calculate this sxy this is equal to summation i goes from 1 to n xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar divided by square root of summation goes from i is equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar bracket square into summation goes from i is equal to 1 to n yi minus y bar bracket square as we had seen depending on the sign of r we can see whether there is a positive correlation or negative correlation between the variables if the sign is positive we can see there is a positive correlation and if the sign is negative then we can see there is a negative correlation but how we can say how much strength of correlation between them is exist for that purpose we need to look at the value of this r if the value of r is between 0.9 and 1 then we can see there is a very high correlation if the sign is positive very high positive correlation and if the sign is negative very high negative correlation if the value of this r is between 0.7 to 0.9 high correlation if the value of this r is between 0.5 to 0.7 moderate correlation and if the value of r is between 0.3 to 0.5 low correlation any case if you are having the value of r is less than 0.3 then we can see correlation is exist by chance or in other words we can say there is a negligible correlation till the point we had seen entire theoretical part of the correlation analysis we had seen what is a correlation analysis how we can say whether the variables are correlated or not what kind of relationship they are having and what is the strength of their relationship now let's understand this correlation analysis with the help of one practical example let's continue with the same data temperature of the day and ice cream sale so here the ice cream shop owner wants to understand whether there is a relationship between the temperature of the day and ice cream sale to calculate the correlation between these two variables please follow the procedure go to the data and then data analysis tab in data analysis tab we need to select the option of correlation click on this correlation option and click ok after that it is asking you what is the input range so we need to select the entire data that is consist of our variables and then make an enter we also need to mention here what is the grouping method whether we have grouped by the column or rows here we can see we have grouped the variables by column so keep the default selection of column as it is we had also labels in the first row so please check this option and then select one of the output options keep the default selection of new worksheet ply so that we can get the output of this analysis into the new worksheet ply and click ok once we click on ok we will be getting the results for this correlation analysis now let's understand the interpretation of these results in detail the results consist of two columns the first one is temperature in degree celsius and ice cream sale in dollar whereas there is also the two important rows which consist of the same variables temperature in degree celsius and ice cream sales in dollar now if you can see the correlation between the temperature in degree celsius and temperature in degree celsius will be 100 percent because it's the same data right and in the similar way for ice cream sale it should be 100 percentage so that's why the value there is a one one is indicating that 100 percent relationships now if you look at the correlation between the temperature in degree celsius and ice cream sale then we can see there is a value is 0.9575 this value is nothing but the pearson's correlation coefficient if you look at the value of this r it is a positive that means if there is an increase in the temperature of the day there will be the corresponding increase in sale of ice creams and the value of this pearson coefficient is 0.9575 which is more than 0.9 so we can say that there is a very high positive correlation between the temperature of the day and ice cream sale we can also use the formula to calculate the correlation between the variables the formula is correct so we can use here as a formula is equal to c o r r e l that stands for correlation click on this correlation formula then we need to select the first area of data that means the first variable then make a comma after that we need to select the second variable once we select the array of first variable and second variable complete the bracket and make the enter so we can see here we are getting the value for correlation coefficient as 0.9575 which is same as we had done by the data analysis tab 
There is one more formula to calculate this correlation coefficient and the formula is Pearson. So we can use the formula is equal to Pearson. Click on the syntax. Select the data for the first variable, comma, and then select the data for the other variable. Complete the bracket and make an enter. Again, we can see we are getting the same value for this correlation coefficient. So there are multiple ways to conduct the correlation analysis between the variables in Microsoft Excel. Now let's see understanding of this correlation analysis by adding one more variable to this analysis, which was sunburn rate. This is an hypothetical data just to explain you what is the difference between the correlation and causation. Okay, so let's conduct the correlation analysis on all these three variables. Please follow the procedure. Go to the data, then select the data analysis tab. Select this correlation option. Click OK. In input range, we need to select all these three variables now. Make enter. As we have grouped the variables by column, so keep the default selection of column as it is. We are having the labels in the first row, so please keep this check option as it is. And select the output option as new worksheet plan and then click OK. Now, we can see here, we got the correlation analysis for all these three variables. Now let's understand the interpretation of these results in detail. Here we can see that there is a positive correlation between the temperature of the day and ice cream sale, which was 0.9575, which we have already seen. We can also see there is a positive correlation between the temperature of the day and sunburn rate, which is 0 0.9660. And also there is a positive correlation between the ice cream sale and sunburn rate, which is 0.9615. Now, if you look at here, we can see both temperature and ice cream sale are having the positive correlation with the sunburn rate. But the relationship between the temperature and sunburn rate is the causation, whereas the relationship between ice cream sale and sunburn rate is the only correlation, no causation. So please involve the subject matter expertise when you are going to conduct the correlation analysis. Now I'm sure that you have got the complete clarity about correlation analysis and how to conduct this correlation analysis in Microsoft Excel by various ways. We will learn another tool in data analysis with the help of practical example into the next video. At the end of this video, if you have found this information useful, then please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Lean Six Sigma and Minitab most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijayasabe.co slash join or successfulcareerhub.com slash courses. One more important thing, if you want to support me or appreciate my efforts, you can also join my YouTube channel by clicking the join button at my YouTube channel. By joining this YouTube channel, you're not only supporting me, but also getting an access to the perks that can help you in your career goal. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.